Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to review what pulmonary edema looks like on the x-ray. So this is the heart and now we're going to take a look on the pulmonary veins. Recall that we have veins for the upper and the lower lobes. These pulmonary veins are located here and you can see here the pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium left atrium, and then goes to the left ventricle. So you wouldn't be surprised to see that if you have problems with the left side of the heart, say here, there will be damming of blood or pulling of blood here in the left atrium. And when you have that, you're going to create increased venous pressure in the pulmonary veins because of gravitational effects in the normal setting the lower lung zone vessels will be larger than the upper lobe vessels take a look at this example lower lung zone vessels are larger than the ones here on the top now what if we have problems with the left side of the heart if the heart is having a hard time pumping blood there will be an increased volume and pressure here within the veins. In compensated cardiac failure, there is chronically elevated venous pressure. But if there is an acute event, say a decompensation, like in acute illness, there will be a further increase in the pulmonary venous pressure. The lower lobe Vessels here can no longer accommodate this increase in volume or in the formal term, there will be loss of basal lung vessel compliance. Hence, there will be a redistribution or increased blood flow to the vessels here on top or in the superior portion of the lungs. Look at this portion of the lung in the periphery. See here in red, this structure is a branch of the pulmonary vein. Again, this pulmonary vein would bring blood from the lung parenchyma here, and it's going to bring here blood to the left atrium, which then goes to the left ventricle. This vessels here will be larger, okay, larger in the portion of the lung, cephalod or superior in the superior portion of the lungs. Because it's superiorly located, this is what we call cephalization. This cephalization is seen in early pulmonary edema. In cases of further increase in venous pressure, some of the fluid within the vessels here are going to seep out into the interstitium. And when you have this interstitial edema, drawn here in pink, okay, you will have vessels with indistinct margins. Just imagine here, vessels with indistinct margins because fluid is already seeping out of it. If the acute congestion is corrected, then the cephalization would be corrected. This is one of the characteristics of pulmonary edema. The changes are quickly seen on serial x-rays. Now what if there is worsening instead of resolution? In this case, we will now see a combination of interstitial and alveolar edema. So again, in this diagram, you can see here that blood would first damp dam up or collect here within the vessel, pulmonary veins making them big, and with further increase, water would seep out and it's going to go into the interstitium, and with further increase, will now involve the alveoli. If you have here fluid within the alveoli, okay, which is drawn here in dark pink, Okay, you will now see opacities or white portions in both the interstitium and in the 
air spaces, as seen here in this radiogram. Compare this more severe case in the left with this one on the right. So today we covered the most common type of pulmonary edema, and that is the hydrostatic type, seen in cases of cardiac failure. Depending on the degree of elevated venous pressure, one may just see cardiomegaly with cephalization or an interstitial pattern plus an alveolar or airspace opacities. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you next time.